In December of 1903, Orville and Wilbur Wright flew their famous inaugural flight at Kitty Hawk, kicking off a new era of human travel and exploration. Eight years later, Italy became the first country to use powered aircraft for war. By 1927, Charles Lindbergh was making the first transatlantic flight from New York to Paris, and in 1932, Amelia Earhart made her historic transatlantic crossing as the first female aviator to fly nonstop from Canada to Ireland. Meanwhile, in Dalton, Georgia, forward thinkers of the day were opening a larger world with the founding of Dalton's first aviation field around 1930. The field was an L-shaped grass strip located at the corner of what is now Cleveland Highway and the Dalton Bypass. The original caption with this 1930 picture of Cleveland Highway states that the structure in the left foreground is Sales Service Station, which was owned by a man named Sales Johnson. It also states that airplanes from the Dalton Airport had to taxi over the road to the station to be refueled. The airport is seen here on this aeronautical chart from 1931, showing Dalton as a waypoint for navigation and airmail routes. Most of the history of Dalton's early airport has been lost, but thankfully a few photos remain that were taken at the original airport. In December 1944, another grass strip opened in Dalton, seen here in this 1945 aeronautical chart at the current airport location at the end of Airport Road. The original layout was an L-shaped grass strip runway. In this aerial photo of the airport from 1993, you can still see the scars of the old runway bed sitting beside the modern asphalt runway. Originally, Airport Road Southeast went to the north of the grass runway and crossed the Conestoga River at Smoke Ford. The roads were later moved several times with the changing runways. In 1948, another airport sprang up in Dalton named Mountain View. Both airports can be seen listed on this aeronautical chart from 1948. The grass runway was located on top of the hill across from the present-day Ford dealership near exit 336 on I-75. This 1955 aerial photo shows the dual grass runway configuration, as well as a hangar and some parked aircraft. A housing development now resides on this spot, but the outline of the larger runway is still clearly visible today. In those days, Floyd Price ran a small aviation service out of both airports, alternating between the two locations. In 1963, Rollins Jolly, then chairman of the Dalton Chamber of Commerce and founder of Jolly Textiles, which later became J&J &J Industries, spearheaded a move to grow the airport at its current location. A 3,000-foot single runway was paved and a permanent fixed base operation, or FBO, was established at what is now officially known as Jolly Field, in honor of Rollins Jolly's efforts. In 1972, taxiway turnaround loops were added to the ends of the runway, and in 1985, a parallel taxi was added, running the full length of the runway. The 80s saw a boom in private aviation which brought new hangars and rapid expansion. By 1993, the runway had been extended to 5,000 feet and the main terminal building and hangar were moved from their original location, further out from the runway. In 2004, the runway was extended another 500 feet to bring it to its present length at over a mile long. As the airport grew, FAA regulations mandated the hangars and buildings be further from the runway. In 2007, 20 new T-hangars were built and the old T-hangars were torn down. In 2018, the ramp area where the old T-hangars stood was repaved, erasing traces of the original configuration. Today, in 2020, the Dalton Municipal Airport sits on 554 acres of city-owned property. 
The runway is 5,500 feet long by 100 feet wide and has a 50-foot wide parallel taxiway which runs the full length of the runway. The runway is complete with precision paint markings, high-intensity pilot-controlled airfield lighting, precision ground-based approaches with both horizontal and vertical guidance, satellite-based approaches, an automated weather observation system, and LED-lighted rotating beacon. The main terminal FBO is City of Dalton operated and provides full service and 24-hour self-serve aviation fuel with two 12,000-gallon fuel tanks and two fuel trucks. The City FBO sells some 85,000 gallons of fuel annually. Facilities include a conference room, pilot lounge, full kitchen, flight planning, passenger lounges, courtesy vehicles, and aircraft maintenance shop. The FBO also manages hangar and ground leasing. There are currently five city-owned hangar buildings which house 48 aircraft and three corporate hangars housing an assortment of corporate jets and turboprops. Dalton Airport is also home to Cole Aviation, an authorized Mooney service center that brings in Mooney aircraft from around the country for service. Dalton Municipal Airport serves as a major gateway to the outside world. Dalton is the home of over 30 international companies, including some that have their North American headquarters in Dalton. Many of these businesses utilize the Dalton Airport as a tool to keep their businesses efficient and profitable. This support includes expanding their market areas, providing access for visiting customers and suppliers, and facilitating just-in-time air shipments of parts and supplies to keep production rolling. Airports in Georgia are major contributors to the state's economy. The airport's annual economic impacts comes from the day-to-day -day operations associated with the airport's management function, activities associated with aviation-related business tenants at the airport, impacts from annual average capital investment, and expenditures from visitors who arrive via the airport. According to the Georgia Department of Transportation's 2020 Economic Impact Study, the Dalton Municipal Airport has a $7.8 million annual economic impact to the state and local economy. There are 71 jobs tied to the airport with a $2.25 million annual payroll. These jobs include management, line personnel, pilots, mechanics, lawn care maintenance personnel, construction workers, engineers, surveyors, and many more. The airport brings in $309,000 annually in tax revenue to the local economy. Every year, federal and state grants pay anywhere from $100,000 to $2 million on airport improvements. These investments go toward local materials needed for the projects, along with the local jobs needed to implement the projects, and the payroll associated with the jobs. In the last eight years, federal, state, and local funds spent to improve the airport have topped $5.5 million. This money not only improves the airport, but goes directly into the hands of local business owners and contractors who perform the work. The estimated expense to maintain the airport for the next five years is around $7 million. That's $6.65 million in federal and state grant monies and $350,000 in local match funding. The five-year economic impact is projected to be $39 million. That's a 457% return on investment. This shows you what a powerful engine local airports are to the national economy and why the federal government is willing to foot 90% of the bill. Everyday operations at the airport include corporate business aircraft, military aircraft, law enforcement, fire patrol aircraft, power line and tree patrol aircraft, federal and state government aircraft, 
collegiate sports team aircraft, medical flights, animal and cargo flights, flight training, pleasure flights, and many more. With our current runway size, a Gulfstream 550 is about the largest jet we can accommodate at Dalton Airport. This jet carries 14 to 19 passengers, is 96 feet 5 inches long with a 93 foot 6 inch wingspan and a 6,000 gallon fuel capacity. It has a top speed of 585 miles per hour and a 7,700 mile range. The largest turboprop aircraft we have ever had in Dalton is a Lockheed Martin C-130 Hercules. Its large cargo frame and four jet-powered propellers make it easy to identify, and you've probably seen them flying low over Chatsworth or the mountains to the east. The Air Force maintains flight training routes, or MTRs, that go through the Dalton area. These routes specifically designate areas where Air Force pilots can practice high-speed maneuvers at low altitudes to maintain proficiency in protecting the homeland in the event of an attack on U.S. soil. The C-130 Hercules is the longest continuously produced military aircraft, now at over 60 years. It has a crew of five and can carry 21 tons of cargo. It has a wingspan of 132 feet 7 inches, making it very likely the largest aircraft to ever be accommodated at Dalton. So what is in the future for the Dalton Airport? We just completed a 10-year airport layout plan, which includes plans to build new tea hangers and corporate-style box hangers, plans for acquiring more avigation easements so that we can remove problem trees and make our approaches safer, and plans to extend the runway to 6,000 feet to allow for even larger jets to utilize the airfield. Other exciting innovations in aviation are emerging, which could bring even more change in the next 10 years. Auto Aviation has just announced their new Solera 500L, which is designed to be a six-person, private aircraft which will fly at 460 miles per hour with a 4,500 nautical mile range. They claim that it will be so efficient it will only cost $328 per hour to operate. The plane has had 31 successful test flights already and is scheduled to hit the market by 2025. Who knows, you may see several of these hangered at Dalton in the near future. As we look to the future, we continue to uphold the 90-year legacy of the airport in Dalton as an integral part of this community we call home.